We are live on City TV this and every Monday and Wednesday. Point of View is your favorite current affairs show, and we like to get you the right guests. We put relevant questions to them, and hopefully we get some real insights. It's live and interactive. Hashtag the Point of View. We're live on Facebook at City TV. Tonight we have a man who used to be the darling boy of NDC politics. He's making a comeback, and he will be speaking to us about life law business politics and ghana stay tuned for a blockbuster so at uh, 25 ish he was lecturing law by 28 he was special assistant to the most powerful man in ghana in his early 30s, he did a lot of things, including help draft our oil and gas laws, led delegations to the UN before 35. And guess what? By 37, he was helping draft Ghana's constitution. He was part of the Consultative Assembly. At 44, he was the new face of Ghana's politics. He ran for president. He had 1.1% of the vote, but he left an impression. Where has he been since the year 2000? And... What does he make of all the soundings that he should come and lead the NDC into election 2020? Augustus Guzi Tano, also known as Obu Adum, is my guest on the show tonight. We'll be asking him whether he's interested in leading the NDC into office or into the election 2020 and what he's been up to for this long time. You are welcome with your comments and your views as we discuss his career on the WhatsApp number that will be on the screen. We will come back and show you his nice face. Don't go away. For regular news checks as they unfold, 2020 news all day all the time politics sports entertainment business and more 2020 news we bring you the world in 20 minutes and that's all the news in 20 minutes Go. hello and welcome to another day another week and of course another episode of 30 minutes we're excited and we will be talking about all the trending conversations spend 30 minutes every weekday catching up with all the trending social media conversations of the day if you tweet it we'll read it we might just even skype you why are you being so raw and hard like that but yeah. at the particular time that's what i want, that's what I want yeah. you to do it but that doesn't mean you are my enemy that's true. we can still meet again and shut up this time we are about to do don't come and do that your nonsense okay please i won't do it and we'll give respect to each other but sometimes i feel you know when we, we are all humans when somebody says something about me shut up, hey, no, 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 no. i might want to say something yeah so but when i say it, people shouldn't take it like uh, taking things you know personal and stuff i've understood showbiz now and i really want to work on it like 30 this. minutes is all it takes so use the hashtag three zero minutes on social media to catch our attention join the most interactive social media tv show weekdays at 5 p.m only on city tv Live music, interviews, poetry, and more with your favorite personalities. Be our guest on Saturdays from 2 to 4 p.m. for the most exciting moments on TV. Join Kojo Akoto Boateng for real entertainment right in your living room. Saturday Live on City TV and City 97.3 FM. It's engaging.
detailed and loaded with factual and incisive analysis. It's The Big Issue, your preferred Saturday morning news and current affairs analysis program on City TV. Tune in this and every Saturday at 9 a.m. and hear the newsmakers discuss the top issues for the week. At that time, at that time, Charlotte was complete. I'm not defending Charlotte. I'm, 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 I'm talking about the way we are, we behave like hypocrites and ostriches in this country. At that time, she was a, a perfect person. It's The Big Issue with Stella Madonu on City TV, this and every Saturday at 9 a.m. You're into the Breakfast Daily on City TV, Stoneboy SSO. Keep it locked, don't log off. <laughs> We spice up your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy-oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. And that is the reason I was making the point to him that I refrained from responding to this Joyce Bauer statement. Because if some citizens have accused President Mahama of diverting a certain amount of money, deal with that, deny no, same, and move on with your man, life. No. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Join us for Breakfast Daily, only on City TV. Welcome back. So this is the point of view. My guest is Guzitano, who is being urged to lead the NDC into the 2020 elections. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening. How have you been? Very well, thank you. I was amazed at your trajectory in politics. Yes. Because by 26, 27, you were doing things that even 50 years hadn't done. Tell us a bit about your initiation into politics. Well, I started politics at a very young age, mm. from school actually. Okay. I, I went to infant school school. And I was involved in representing my class and form in the school council, school okay. representative council. I began political organization seriously uh, in when I entered the university, mm. second year. I belonged to an organization called the New Democratic Movement. Okay. And my first assignment was to organize uh, uh, the grassroots in Lima 441. And then immediately also after that, I did some work in Maprobi and then also in Tema. At what age? I think I was 19 or 20, something like that. Wow. Yes, that's right. And so uh, after that, of course, we had the crisis of the 70s when we had to resist the military regime at the time. And it was a very turbulent, choppy time in our history. And uh, we got arrested for... So this is 79-ish. 77, 78, 79. So you were 21? Yeah, I was at that time. And you were resisting the military government? Well, it was the student body, the professionals and everybody else oh. because of the uh, attempt to force the UNIGAV uh, regime on Ghana. A champion. A champion, yes. And we were arrested, uh, quite a few of us, put in jail. <laughs> and uh, thereafter, uh, we came out and continued the struggle. Mm. until uh, there was a change and then June 4th came and uh, 31st and we participated actively in, in both. both and so you supported both June 4th and 31st well like most Ghanaians I did a lot of people supported June 4th not many supported Rollins second coming they thought he should have given um, Hilal Iman a bit more time well that, that's history I think that the important thing was that it did happen mm. And uh, the transformative effects of that is what we're benefiting today. Today we have a constitution that has lasted longer than any other mm. constitution. That, that came out of the struggles of the 80s, the struggles of the 31st December, December Revolution. Uh, it's also a very strongly social democratic constitution, if you actually look at it and study it, uh, because of the grassroots intent to ensure that we have a fairer and more just society built on social justice and accountability. Mm. And that's... You can see that. And you helped write this? Yes, I, I was one of the CDR representatives who were chosen to represent uh, the national movement. This is 91? Yes, in the, in the Consultative Assembly. So in the mid-30s? Yes. In the and you were writing a constitution for a country? 
Well, I think younger people in history have written constitutions. But at 25 years, <laughs> you were lecturing. 82. Yes, 82. I was. I was a lecturer in, at the University of Ghana. I was teaching contract law and uh, legal systems, and occasionally taking tutorials in philosophy, philosophy of law, jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. How how were you so adept at the law? Was it the lecturers you had, or were you just good at? Well, it? I think that uh, our group uh, of the 70s had a tremendous faculty you mm. know, of very highly uh, capable yeah. individuals, Chachu Chikata, Professor Akira Pasoya, Professor Butre, or Dr. Butre. Uh, we had uh, Professor Fusuama. I missed him, but, but others uh, uh, met him, uh, Fui Chikata, and so on. All so, these people taught you? Yeah, some of them taught me, but you know, it created an intellectual environment that was wow. in those We learned a lot about our country, about what was possible. Mm and indeed how we insert ourselves within the political spectrum ah. to see how we can improve this country. But you left that to it. then become special assistant to the chairman of the PNDC. Yes. And this is still around 28, 27. That's right. Chairman Rawlings, you were a special assistant. Yes, for, for a brief... brief oh, so what were you doing? Well, I was uh, like every a special assistant to do special things like... Uh, uh, working to resolve disputes and problems in Takwari all over the country, mm. uh, discussing policy issues, engaging in organizational work. But fundamentally, most of my work was with the grassroots movement, the CDR, well, PDCs, and then the CDR. Co com committee for the Defense of the Revolution. Yes, and then People's Defense Committee, which was a grassroots organization, community-based and worker-based. So know. for you, politics has always been bottom-up? Absolutely. Organizing people? Absolutely. In the context of our country and its, its uh, developing status. Uh, in fact, in any economy, I mean, your workers and producers are the key and foundation to that economy. And to the extent that uh, we wanted to create a fairer society, it was important to mobilize their mm. activity, their energy, to ensure that the institutions of governance were accountable, the, uh, the administration of our natural, natural resources and national resources mm -hmm. were accessible and equal opportunity was available to all, particularly for education and healthcare. I was intrigued to note that in 85, mm -hmm. in addition to your duties, you were appointed by the government on, on a committee on petroleum and contract negotiations. That's right. Something mm -hmm. that Akela Kwasoya has been trying to do a few years ago. You were doing this still around the age of 29. No, I, I think that what happened was that, you know, uh, prior to the um, 85, uh, one of the efforts of the PNDC was to basically transform the economy mm -hmm. and bring it up to a level that was responsive to modern trends. Uh, the petroleum regime had basically been um, uh, tied as an appendage to the mining regime, mining lease yes. arrangement, which was not quite uh, uh, adequate mm -hmm. in terms of the strides that the industry had made. So the government appointed a, a negotiating committee to review the laws, uh, enter into new petroleum agreements mm -hmm. and adopt new mechanisms for uh, engaging national uh, oil companies and, 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 and invite them to exploit the potential resources that we have. Because, you know, Ghana has been actually uh, looking for oil and produced oil in certain since 1896. And it is only recently that we managed to achieve the commercial quantities that have made it possible. So the oil sector we run today, it's fair to say you were part of those who set up the legal architecture that governs it. Precisely. And then was, you went to work at GMPC. Yes. I, I was in, very much involved in the petroleum income tax law mm. and also some of the associated laws. So if you're not making anything from oil, we can blame you? Not really. I think that we did our very best. And I think that if you look at the regime that we uh, instituted, which is being used today, which is profit related and also tries to get as much of the resource for the state mm. through not only royalties but also through uh, income tax mm. and what they call uh, additional oil entitlement mm. and other you know, people say we don't have local content. We haven't a sig we don't have a significant private Ghanaian player in oils apart from GMPs. But but we've been we've been we've been uh, building roads and we've been building houses and 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 infrastructure and we don't have a significant construction player that can be you know at par with any any any, any um, international player 
that is the problem. So it's China. not limited to oil. No, it's all across the board. That is the problem. We have not supported our entrepreneurs. We have not invested in them. Mm. We have not carried their capacity mm. and advertised them to do work not only in 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 in, in the sub region mm. but beyond the sub region. Of course, during Rawlings' time, there was an attempt to do that, where SCC did some construction work in Angola, mm. and I believe uh, Eagle Star did some work in Equatorial Guinea. You know, but that is really mm. uh, 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 one of the concerns in, in building GMPC, to give it total capability so that one day it becomes mm. as good as any uh, uh, state. state we'll oil come company. back to the oil sector. Just, mm -hmm. I'm just running through some of that. So in the 80s as well, you led delegations to the UN, worked on the Security Council when Ghana was a member. This is still a rather young age. And of course, Kofi Annan's death brings back the UN. So you were quite involved with the UN for Ghana in your early years as well? Yes, in 1986, Ghana was elected to the Security Council. Mm. And um, the, the, I was requested to join the delegation as an advisor mm. uh, because they needed more staff. At um, the age of 30? Yes, at the age of 30. And so I joined the delegation and was given assignments also in the General Assembly. You know, the General Assembly has six committees. Mm -hmm. So I was given the assignment for the legal committee, which is the sixth, sixth committee, mm. and also assignments for the fourth committee, which was the decolonization committee. So I, I presented Ghana on those, and also on the special political committee. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and did quite a lot of work. It was a very exciting time, particularly when Ghana was on the Security Council. Because those were, that was the time that we had the attacks on Libya, mm -hmm. if you remember. That was also the time that we had the Nicaraguan con contrast. And that is also the time that we had the, 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 the global response to the dangers, the crisis, and the sheer brutality of the apartheid regime. Mm. And when the apartheid movement began to evolve a global reach, and mm. that is when we were there. And that Any was encounters really with Kofi Annan at the time, or at the time he wasn't significant in the UN? He was. He was Assistant uh, Secretary General mm. for Human Resources. And was very much involved in the administrative reforms of the uh, of the UN through the Fifth Committee and what they call the ACBQ. He was my neighbor also. I oh, lived okay. on the, the we had a flat, the, the mission, and he lived on Roosevelt Island. So oh, I, wow. I saw him. Many and you times. both went in front of him. Yes, we did. Yes, and I, had, I was very fortunate to have a fantastic ambassador and leader, mm. Ambassador Victor Beho, who taught us a wonderful colleague, Edward Kufo, and so on. So mm. for, for really fantastic. Wow, experience, a, a learning, a learning process. And yeah. then within all that period, you came back, did some banking work as well. You were part of the guys who brought Echo Bank to Ghana. I'm told. Well, no, I didn't bring Echo Bank. GMPC was a shareholder. Okay. In Echo Bank. So you understand? Yes, and we encouraged it. We did a lot of business, and because the idea of a transnational West African uh, bank was very attractive. Don't mm. forget that Ghana had been a leader in this. Uh, Ghana Commercial Bank began uh, uh, investing and, and, and establishing branches in Lagos, in Lomi, mm. as part of the you know, uh, 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 economic uh, outreach to the rest of Africa. Mm. Unfortunately, that attenuated and, and then unfortunately ended. Mm. So when Ecobank came, it came as one of the uh, the 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 the, the rules mm. that could, got, that could fill a niche, and GMP was very interested in supporting that. Wow! You know? Yeah. So here you are with politics, law, oil and gas, banking, academia, all at a very young age. Yeah. And so it was a privilege. You were almost like the the poster boy for everything that's good about the PNDC, rising star. No, I, I wouldn't say that. But the other contemporaries were the same level. The PNDC, in fact, one of the extraordinary things about the PNDC mm. was a sheer intellectual and te technocratic capacity mm. that Rowling was able to attract. You know, mm. uh, outstanding people, just as Anand, you know, uh, uh, Ahoy, the Ahoy's, uh, Chachu Chikata, Captain Kojo Chikata, and, and many others who were remarkable in their fields, you know, of, of endeavor and their professions. And, and, and it was a non-partisan thing because Rawlings was able to reach out to the CPP traditional uh, 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 tradition, the, the UP tradition, and also the emergent uh, uh, revolutionary yeah. tradition and put them together to prosecute a national agenda of reconstruction and rebuilding. Because okay. I'm sure you know that by the time 31st had arrived, yeah. Ghana was in total chaos. Uh, I think our our inflation rate was 147 <laughs> percent. If you wanted to toilet roll, you went to Lomé to buy toilet roll and toothpaste. Wow! 
because there was no foreign exchange. The currency was completely overvalued, and the currency, the parallel market was multiples of what the official rate was. There was no foreign exchange. Almost all the state industries had collapsed. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 uh, I think the foreign exchange cover was less than a week mm -hmm. at the time that uh, the, he took over. He, he took over. So it was a really a crisis situation. And don't forget that because of the impact of the Iran Iraq 1979 war. Mm. Oil prices had really skyrocketed and really killed our balance of payments position. And to that extent, there was a tremendous crisis, you know, within the body politic. I'd be walking to you, go and you look at the shelves, and there's only one product some weird uh, corned beef from Argentina filling all the, the shelves. That's how it was. Mm. So when you look at Ghana today, it's very hard to imagine. How where it came from. Quickly talk about how you guys went to IM Yes. who did not believe in the ways that the Bretton Woods institutions thought about the world. So it must have been humbling to go cap in hand saying, we need a bailout from you, come and help us rebuild our economy. So it was a very difficult time. And you're right that the left had always campaigned mm -hmm. on the fact that we should be independent of the Bretton Woods institutions. And that indeed if you went for, say, a standby facility, and they will impose conditionalities on you that basically impacted on the social groupings that we represented, workers and so on. Because IMF traditionally had a, 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 a few tenants, religious tenants, mm -hmm. cut public expenditure, cut the deficit, jack up interest rates, devalue your currency, and all that impact negatively on working people, especially those on fixed incomes and salaries. So mm -hmm. there was resistance and there was a divide. Because some groups thought that, well, let's go to the East, mm -hmm. and the East will support us because we're progressive and revolutionary. But they don't have money. And well, well, they were going through a crisis as well. You know. And then some said, well, if we're undertaking a national democratic revolu revolution, then we must be practical in our outlook. We need money. We don't have foreign exchange. The IMF is there to support member countries to provide standby facilities and liquidity that allows them to begin to make their payment obligations are just mm. uh, because if you have an inflation rate of 147 percent the people who are dying because of that are your ordinary workers you know mm -hmm. and if you have a uh, balance of payments that has gone completely out of gear mm. then of course uh, it's a crisis you know? so so we're, we're talking to Chichu, uh, look at me <laughs> guzitano and uh, this is the, the point of view and we'll be happy to engage with you we'll do it some politics later on but I'm going to read a few things to you to react to because this sure. is a nice political career, right? Sure. So by 35, you are really a well-rounded political figure. Obeda Samoa's book says that the Swedish declaration was what led to the formation of the reform movement. And he writes on page 463 that it led to disaffection among a group known as the Cadres. During talks, he was making proposals to appease people like you. But the group decided that they would leave the party. He was horrified by the consequence of their decision to leave the party. And he says, a faction of the cadres, led by Sam Gaba, decided to remain within the NDC and seek reform within it. Then this is his point about you guys. Another faction, led by Guzitano, Opoku Chechere, and Podube, decided to break away and form the National Reform Party. My warning to them about the naivety of their fundamental assumptions that the membership of their party, as owners of the party, would fund it proved difficult for them to appreciate. But I knew from my experience with the NDC that the assumption was naive. Is, but you know that he left the NDC. Later. The very person who is, is writing this. Uh, so it just shows you that uh, perhaps uh, he should have listened to his own advice as well. But he was right. Wasn't so, he? he was not right. I mean, let, let's go back to the history because I think some of the assumptions are wrong. Okay. And I want to do quickly a yes. quick. Uh, in 1996, you know, in 92, we were all at the party headquarters uh, working uh, to working and basically crystallizing the work that we had done in creating the NDC through the development union, which I was involved with my colleagues, Samgaba, Chucho, Poku, Bodobi, Huriaya, and so on. Uh, because the NDC was a, a, an amalgamation of different groupings, so that's why it's called a Congress. So you had the development union, the front of which was formed with people like Asidu, Inkitia, and so on, in the consultative assembly, those who came to the consultative assembly, and then you had the Eagle, and then New Nation, and so on. And all of these came together to form NDC. 
we worked steadfastly and, and were able to win the 92 elections by a very wide margin. After that, we left because we felt that the process of decay had begun. Once we got into party politics, then people began to, to behave, if you like, as politicians do, in a way that unfortunately discredits the, the, the began to discredit the founding principles of, 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 of well, began to contravene the founding principles of, of our party, mm. you know, and, and its history as a grassroots, honest, accountable uh, uh, party. So by August 96, I had moved back to, I, was, I created a business, I was working on that, and I was not very active. Occasionally, I would uh, do speaking engagements for the grassroots in Tema in particular, mm. and in the rest of the country always espousing the popular democracy, accountability, transparency, which has been an area of great concern mm. and, and, and attention by myself. In 96, it was pretty clear that the MPP was becoming stronger, and it wasn't clear how the elections in 96 would go. So in August 96, Professor Mills sent for me, got, uh, uh, nominated as a vice presidential candidate for Rawlings for that election. He asked me to get my group back into the party. So your group was not actively involved? We were, we were not active, we had been dormant, you know, get back and try and 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 understand that with victory mm. the issues that we had raised will be addressed internally. Was it the 96 dormancy? Was it not because you were not chosen as running mate? Some people felt that I had, you were upset. No, no, no. That you, were, you were 40. 96. 96 I, have, I don't even think I qualified to be a vice president. Sure? Yeah, I'm sure about that. Okay. And so what happened was that uh, when um, Mills called me, I said, okay, we will work and we will give our all as we have done in the past mm. with the understanding that reforms were okay. So we did work and truly in 96 also, we won by a very wide margin. But if you look at the results, this is a social democratic party. Mm. Normally, working class areas should be pro the party. So areas like Tema, Takradi, uh, Accra, Accra Industrial, Kumasi, to some extent, if you remove the ethnic factor, the results of 92 have started falling in the urban areas. So during the post-mortem assessment at Gimpa, with the president there, and the vice president, I was called to pay, make an assessment. And my assessment was that part of the reason why the urban vote was gradually going against us was because of the perception of corruption, arrogance, and impunity. This is long before this radio declaration. And it was important for us to recognize that and begin to correct that, mm. you know, and begin to train, educate, and basically uh, uh, return to the, core to the core principles that have been our founding uh, probity uh, and accountability. Precisely. And, and that's what happened. Okay? Was then, the advice taking? Well, partially. But then, when the VAT and Kumukpeku occurred, mm. the Constitution says everybody has a right to protest mm -hmm. and to go on the streets and articulate their positions. Yeah. And Kumuk Perkun was exercising that. A group of people associated with the NDC were organized to counter the demonstration. It created problems and pe people died. Mm. So a group of us issued a statement condemning the acts by our own people and saying it was not correct. That was not taken kindly. kindly. But we felt that as a matter of principle, mm. it was important to establish the, 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 the point that you do not act this way in a democracy, particularly in a context where tensions will flare up and lives were lost. Soon after that, pressure started. I don't want to go into the details, but the peak of the crisis was when there was an attempt, later denied, to arrest one of our key cadres, Sam Gaba. Mm. So we all moved to Sam Gaba's place to try and protect him. So they came for him then they would take us all. And unfortunately, uh, fortunately, nothing happened. So the process of the discontent started. had started okay. long before. 
And in fact, there was going to be a statement issued before the Seydoux Declaration. But unfortunately, Alban and Trichy were in Paris. So they, and they were... So uh, Alban yeah. was part of your... Yes. Alban Bagbin. Yes, he was very much your part of... Your former office mate. Yes, and my student, you know, was, uh, was, was, was part of that. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, we couldn't issue a statement. And then the declaration came. And it was, ah, these people, is because uh, so-and-so has not been made. I, we had nothing... It, it wasn't mills. the mills. It had nothing to do with mills. Absolutely nothing to do with mills. Let me read an article Kweku Sishadu wrote about you for the BBC 1st December 2000. Because then you had formed the Reform Party and you were the yes. candidate. And uh, viewers, permit me to read a few lines. If anyone is spicing Afghan's election, it is Guzi Tano, the 44-year-old former founding member of the ruling NDC. Mr. Tano's Reform Party broke away from the NDC last year, Sorry. citing corruption and lack of internal democracy. The latter has been borne by the NDC squabbles, handing the NRP, I told you, for credibility. Then he talked about your, your past and a few things. Then he says, instead of traditional political rallies, Mr. Tano and his NRP have been holding town meetings where they engage in question and answer sessions with communities under village trees. A bit like Obama. <laughs> His a detailed grasp of national economic and social questions, a payoff of the deliberate, regular, and thorough studies by the NRP's youthful and intellectual leadership. Although Mr. Tano is not about to run away with the presidency, oh, sorry. and then talks about your baggage from the NDC, he will hurt the NDC and the chances of its presidential candidate, John Atamills, because part of the NRP's core following is dissolution former NDC grassroots activists. And then he also says some undecideds also find the NRP's focus on issues and this message of a new political culture of tolerance attractive. Then he ends by saying, Mr. Tano and the NRP are poised to become a major political force for the future with the capacity to snatch young people from both the main opposition MPP and the NDC, depending on which one of the two major parties loses the election. You agree with this? Was, was, was he on point, largely? Well, I think that uh, many of us had been content that the politics, the political culture had deteriorated. Mm. I mean, you can have these mass rallies right, where you say nothing and you don't really engage people so boy, about boy. the problems, about the issues. Mm. And you find that a lot of our political discourse are our personalities. You know, this person said this, he did that, and so on. And that's really address how we're going to mm. uh, improve our culture, improve on farm productivity. You know, it, it doesn't do any of those things. You know, and unfortunately, uh, it was something that we felt was lacking, mm. and it was important to engage the people, okay. particularly the, the problems that they had, and the possible solutions that uh, we could adopt mm -hmm. to address the issues of, 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 of improvement in their lives, whether it's health, it's education, income, or whatever uh, preoccupation that they have. So, yes, we were concerned about an issues related to politics, and we. we so you were that. doing grassroots, as he said. Absolutely. But well. he, he predicted that you would hit the NDC, and you did. So, some, in fact, some NDC people blame you for that loss, 2000. You see, one of the hardest things in life is to leave something that you have been part of, nurtured, mm. developed. But if you feel that the core fundamental precepts on which that organization was built, particularly because NDC is so key in the politics of this country as the only if you like, progressive party with any strength and clout. If that party resorts to intimidation and silencing its members and begins even to reach out to the private sector to get uh, those who protest and dissent sacked or intimidate people by way of arrest, then we have a duty to say this cannot happen and if we have to go out, then we must go out and establish that, even though our hearts are broken and our hearts were broken. But you won't stay and fight? Within, because once you if leave, space, you, you give the, the opponents of the space, party if the space, the, the space if the space to decimate to, the forces of the party. If the space was there to fight, we would have stayed. Because that's something that we were part of its creation. It wasn't. How would you like to be a worker at the length that you go to work and say you've been dismissed? This was what was happening? Absolutely. In the private sector? Yeah, in the private sector. Not in the state sector. Wow. Yeah. And... You have to understand that democracy is not something that stands still. You have to fight for it all the time. Because if, if you look at the Federalist Papers and the construction of the American Constitution, the animal that everybody wanted to contain was executive power. 
because of its power to arrest and so on and so forth, to contain it and make it accountable. Executive power is power, if you look at all the three branches. So you must fight it to maintain your liberties so you left and so on. Because you were fighting the excesses. But yes. when did you come back? In 2004, after the election, Professor Mills uh, invited me through the instrumentality of my dear friend who has died, uh, His Excellency Emisata, okay. to his house at okay. Ridge, that he wanted us to re-engage and to come back. 2004? 2004. This is after the election. Mm -hmm. And that he felt that the absence of reform had created uh, a gap and a hole in, in, in the outlook and mobilizing capacity of the NDC. So we talked to him and the conversation continued for several years. And then two, in 2007, uh, we renewed contacts and began to negotiate a return. Uh, our position with, with Professor was that we were willing to return but we'll do so in stages. So our okay. grassroots moved in, and gradually by 2008, 2009, most of us had moved in. Mm. And, and, and we're very active in 2008 for Professor Bell's election, and active in 2012 for John's, his ex-concept, John Mahana's election, and somewhat active in 2016. So you, you, you've been working within the NDC since 2007? Yes, two, so, just before the 2008 election. So did you work for them in the 2016 election? Well, we did. I, I, we, our group did. The group that you're seeing. We worked uh, throughout the country, but predominantly in, in the South. Mm -hmm. Officially or unofficially? We, it's, a, it's a group that has its network, so we use that network. In fact, some of the groups that we, you saw on Saturday were formed in 2008, mm. and some were formed in 2010, and the most recent was formed, I think, in 2015. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There have been very many articles online urging NDC urging you to run and lead the NDC. There's a, a group that, I, I forget the name, but they, they have a very interesting name. They say, Guzi, we have a choice 2020. And there have been all kinds of interesting things on. Are these people you sponsor, or who are, who are these people? Do you know them? Well, you know, this is not the first time. <laughs> I'm sure you know that. Okay. Yeah, in uh, 2012, when the vice presidential nomination, my name was all over the place. It, it, it comes and goes. But I took a decision that I, I did not want to participate in, 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 in the limelight. Mm. That I had businesses to develop. I was, I'm very interested in developing projects that alleviate the lost, lot of our people, particularly in agriculture. I feel that agriculture is the key. So you are not interested in 2012 you running, mate? I was. Everybody because assumed. Because strongly mentioned. Yes, everybody assumed that I was. You are fancy, I, I, I just, young, I just, you just good fancy, looking, you know, you know, like The NDC discourse never really had a tribal component. But it's fancy. clear these days. It's about merit. It's about capacity. Where you come from is not important. It's whether you embody the values that people are looking for and you have the capacity to discharge the duties that... Uh, uh, being appointed to such a high position. Uh, so that's in the past because now they always run. And yeah. we need to reverse that. That's part of our, our, our program, to reverse this extraordinary ethnicity that is gripping this country. There are two things that collapse nations. Mm. And I may say so respectfully. Yes. Religion and ethnicity. Tribe. Mm. You've seen what happened in Rwanda. Mm. You've seen what happened in Sierra Leone. To some extent, you've seen what happened in Liberia. These are dangerous things. And irresponsible politicians use it to the advantage, to the disadvantage of the totality of our integrated effort to remain as nations and continue as nations and build together. But in Ghana, people self-identify with some political parties based on, if you look at the votes, you've done this. Yes. <laughs> some regions will and, vote and, 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 and the effort must always be to resist that, educate, train, and let people see that merit is key to any developmental effort. If you put somebody who does not deserve to be in a position, in a high office, who has no qualification, who is simply be from your hometown, it doesn't work. And we've seen that many, many times. So you've come back into the NDC 2008. It's been 10 years. The NDC was in power under Mills for four years and four years under Mahama. Having they done well, why aren't you just why aren't you supporting Mahama to continue the good work Mills started? Well, I, let, let me make a point. I, I think that everybody has a right to decide that they have the capacity to lead this country for a second or third time. And I believe that Mahama has that right, and I would defend that right. 
I believe that NDC could do much better. NDC married to its founding principles of accountability, social justice, and development can do much better. The results of the 2016 is basically an indictment of a particular period in our history. And we mustn't run away from that. We must face it. Every great party, every great nation faces the problem that it has with the intention of finding solutions. Perception of corruption. Misaligned economic policies. Impunity. Injustice. We are in a nation now where it is all right to be greedy. Perception of corruption of corruption. Which is Perception it? of corruption. Because we must be very careful how we choose our words. Sometimes people are uh, alleged to do things, and when it gets to a court of law, they let go because so there's no evidence. Per perception. Misaligned priorities. Per misaligned priorities. Look. Look at. That's, look, that's poor leadership, then. Look at. Look at. Leadership is about priorities. Look right? at. Look at. But, but it's, it's been consistent throughout until with a few shiny examples. This is a country that is basically agricultural. Mm. Its growth trajectory is going to come out of agriculture because agriculture employs more than 50% of the population. If you have statistics that show that in the early, from 2012 to 2013, agriculture grew negatively. It's been growing 0.4% and only recently 3.5%. Your population growth rate is above 2%. So your net margin of food security, your net margin is dicey. You're always on the threshold of collapse. That is not and it's not prioritized. If you look at the budget and the allocation, it's not prioritized. So the, the approach of the Mahama administration... It's not the approach of the Mahama administration. The priorities. It is the, the approach in throughout our post-independence uh, 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 career as a nation. You don't want to set... You don't want to... Uh, you know, I think that what, what has happened is that the, the decay has been ongoing and long. And it's happened... So to, it means there's no difference between the NDC and PP then? Well, a lot of people do not know the difference between the, the politics of the two. It's a fact. But NDC is a social democratic party. It believes in accountability. It believes in social justice. It believes in grassroots mobilization. It believes in internally generated economic solutions. It believes in self-reliance. It believes in uplifting the productive sector mm. and, and the technology. This is the NDC. Run this is the NDC we formed, and the NDC that is going to be renewed and come back. So the NDC that has lost its way. Yes, well, it we'll has come lost back its way. and find out what, what different Mr. Guzzi Tano brings, and whether he will accept to 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 declare his candidate or at least run. We are on point of view on City TV. We have some comments we'll read as well. If you are watching us, get in touch. Don't go away. Live music, interviews, poetry, and more with your favorite personalities. Be our guest on Saturdays from 2 to 4 p.m. for the most exciting moments on TV. for real entertainment right in your living room. Saturday Live on City TV and City 97.3 FM. Wherever the weekend sporting action happens, we will bring it to you here on Scorecard. Every goal, every dunk, every punch the winning strides and the winning volleys come international media he said look wait sit and wait let me have a meal with my people <laughs> and i think that that's the same cool it's the same organization he brings to the field every time i've seen him play he looks to me like somebody who's played over 50 cups already okay. but this guy yeah.
probably played over 25 caps for the national team. All of the weekends at 7.30 p.m. prompt on CTTV. Welcome back. This is the TV live on Facebook. My guest is Guzitano, the man who wants to lead the NDC into the 2020 elections. And fascinating political journey, culminating in his leading the NRP to the 2000 election. He's back with the bank. Here are some of your comments. Welcome back, Guzi. So refreshing to hear from you once again. I'm Paco from Adabraka, behind CTFM. NPP NDC must go. We need new ideas. Guzitano should think of joining another party. This is Bonzi from Adenta. Guzetano, Rawlings 2. Hmm. So now that you are back, what will be your tagline? Bernard, I shall return to you again, just like Guzetano is doing. Great show always. You make TV relevant. Dr. Adade from Kumasi. Wow. So this man is... So this is the man behind the name Guzetano. My dad used to mention his name when lecturing me on NDC. But unfortunately, he and other big men in NDC are gradually sinking into oblivion. Please come together for 2020 election. My greatest regret was voting against NDC in 2016. Post nurses now. <laughs> I'd like to ask Mr. Guzitano what his take on Ghana's educational system is and the youth unemployment situation. Actually, from Goma Ekropong. I'm sure you'd like to address that. Sure. Kwame from Kaswam. Wow, impressive. His early years achievement challenged me as a young man to do more. Thanks, Bernard. Good evening, Bernard. Comrade Guzitano is indeed a great mind and his credentials are impeccable. Please ask Comrade Guzi. What profoundly influenced the decision to leave the NDC to form NRP in 2000? Karim, Karim has answered that already. Ala PK from Senya Breku in the central region. Indeed, it's been long overdue since Guzi Tano disappeared from our TV screens. <laughs> we hope his return to our political scene will be a positive one. Hashtag the point of view. But now, can Mr. Guzi Tano give an opinion on whether the oil and gas industry must have a substantive minister or a focal pointer person? An interesting question for you as well. Um, good evening, Bernard. I don't think this man will be accepted by the NDC party. It's sad great brains are not useful to in the nation. God bless Ghana, Pastor Faith in Tema. Wow, the man is very handsome. He looks like a presidential material. <laughs> this is my first time I'm seeing him on any platform, but I heard of him in the early 2000s. Bernard, if I were a delegate of the NDC, I would vote him to lead the, N the party and subsequently become the president of our dear nation, Kojo Apia in Oyarefa. So I think I'll pause here and co comment on quick things. Uh, education, youth unemployment. Okay, I, I think that the education thing is, is a national issue. Yeah. And as a nation, we must get it right. Mm -hmm. I think the partisanship is unhelpful. Yeah. Uh, the Constitution, Article 25, uh, states very clearly that we must democratize education and make it accessible yeah. and universal. We, by, we began with basic, mm -hmm. F cube. And the new government is trying to uh, implement um, uh, the free SHS. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea, but unfortunately, for a party that has been espousing since 2012 the free SHS idea, it came to implementation completely unprepared. The funding, the consequences for uh, 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 various components of the educational system mm -hmm. in terms of the social reach. Because I think the Minister of Finance made the point that it's really hard to justify somebody of his standing in society paying, not paying fees. Yes. And a poor farmer on a two and a half acre land mm. where he has to etch out a living with great difficulty, you know, also benefits from that thing. We need to make that differentiation. We need to get civil society, corporates, mm. private sector, the church is involved in assisting. So it's a good fund. idea, poorly implemented. Absolutely. I, I think that as a social democratic party, we should own that program and say we can do it better. It's already NDC. gone. It's not gone because you can see the problems they're having implementing it because it was not thought through. And don't forget that this free education is a CPP progressive slogan that, NG, that NPP has adopted. And in adopting it, it forgot that it's, not, it's much more than a slogan. It's a real deal. 
It affects the lives of people and you must plan it so well and execute it. Right it for the NDC opposed it in a way, the way they campaigned in 2016. I think, they, I think their response also was not well thought through. Because this is what a social democratic party owns. Free education that uplifts, wow. that engages, and that ensures that... Because if you look at the, the PNDC reforms, the whole idea was to democratize education, expand it. We've done a lot of the expansion. FQ mm -hmm. was put in the constitution as compulsory. And the idea was further to go further down yeah. and, 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 and make it accessible and, ma and make it affordable. The choice has been made to do free education. We have no objection with that. But it must be implemented correctly and the, properly. The MPP has a couple more. One district, one factory, one village, one dam. They seem very... They're very good at slogans. I mean, there, there's no question about yeah. that. These slogans, I think, garner votes. But as I said, we must, we must stop, and I say this to everybody, this loose thing. If you say with the kind of banking system that we have, that does not fund productive activity, but prefers to fund commerce, imports, and put money in, in, in government securities, all right? Is it possible to get the kind of funding that allows whatever you determine as, 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 a, as a factory or economic activity, all right? Will they get the requ requisite funding? What is the state's role? So what will be your what will be the role what of the what local? What will be your industrialization ag agenda? I believe in, in making lasting steps that begin to create the linkages in our economy. For instance, if you look at the ecological zones of Ghana, yeah. Ikra, all the way to Salaga, both east and west, that is where you have to focus your agriculture. Create a special agricultural zone. Give all the incentives that you give for corporates that want to go in and develop. Diversification of crops, both export, domestic, consumption, value addition, through fair processing. If you look at the Chinese experience, can you imagine that it took 200 years for the West to It took China generation, 30 years, based on intervention at the local level to create employment, create industry, create uh, 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 Some would say you were close to power for 12 years. You could have implemented these ideas. Well, you need space to implement those ideas. You need a political... How can you change that culture? I mean, you want to... Right? <laughs> the, the people, the delegates who would vote, some, a lot of them ask for money, they need transportation, the system... But the point about corruption... So why? If, 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 if... if don't know where the money comes from. That's, if we don't, so if... And no, no, the corruption starts from our values we've reached a then you can break the law with impunity mm. you can do anything you like and you're not accountable true laws that enforce uh, 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 so if the uh, values don't change you don't have you don't have any hope it's as any sensible political party with partly one one city a week. Two million cities a week times fifty-two. That's how much. That's about twenty. Because you need ownership. We say that of the politicians, where it was completely people gave resources to the party to prosecute. NDC supporters would want to willingly give a CD a it's undermining the functionaries who call those reform begin to create a new awareness because an awakening mass movement in itself is a control of abuse and impunity and arrogance an awakening mass movement it is I'm accountable to my branch I'm accountable to my party with the trust to represent a minister, a deputy minister, a DC, or whatever it is. If you don't have people who are aware of their rights, are prepared to fight for those rights, then what happens? This to be education minister was.
capacity. That's a good thing. So if you appoint somebody who is blind, everybody to join hands to begin a reconstruction and remove it, push it away. Go on the ground. What would the NDC faithful tell you? They tell you how disillusioned they are. They feel uh. how there's no hope. Attract a society where they need the energy. Uh, that happened by '88. We had our my, my, my producer has told me I have 15 extra minutes, so okay. they are enjoying. Okay. Have been I personally <laughs> know this man. He's a real man with the right ideas, but my concern is that. Isaac Ashaiman. <laughs> you should go to some earlier messages. Good evening, Bar. In fact, Guzi is an honest politician. Met. He's passionate about youth and entrepreneurship. Well done, CCTV, for bringing this great man. What a great gem. Um, the old adage. I'm going to put 15, 10% on a contract and I'm going to use that to finance the party. Mm -hmm. Who said the resources of the nation of Ghana are for any party? So, let's have a transparent process. People do get resources from foreign. Account for it. Supported by a foreign power. You to ransom. Whether it's corporates, whether it's foreign governments, whether it's whatever it is. A lot of people who were between the ages don't know you. I mean, the last. It's not just the resources. The Even the rice is calculated. Uh, uh, that makes it possible for this country to move forward and not be caught crisis. We have. You've spoken. Like, what's your? What's your? The person who grew the seeds to give to the extension officer, the loader, the warehouse keeper, the GPR two car people who are engaged in the delivery of a product of value. It is those who create employment, mm. and I'm saying that by agriculture, mm -hmm. begin to add, but also export. But you know we don't control our economy. And how do you control our economy? You know that if you take how your economy, situations that we must overcome, we must promote. Because what is our window to the world? Our window to the world is 300 to calculate the total GDP of billion dollars plus. That is no mean amount. 34, if you add 350 million people, they have growing up. If there was a Zeta, politics should reward people. I don't believe that any, any political party. So, who supports you in the NDC? A candidate. Roll out the factual the roots that made it the have you counted and I have well my dear sir if uh, but the party if, if but but you see the party no, 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 no. Better, better, better. was in power on the, the the party you want to lead led them for eight years in fact in our fourth republic so it means that people are angry at you you have a situation where labor is completely unprotected now mm. what do you call a situation where people go to uh, hospitals with a national health insurance card mm -hmm. and they're where they're paying two three years four years rent advance they're having problems with transport and you are saying that everybody is happy. What was the last time? And, and we're what enjoying what the, life. What was the last time I spoke to Rawlings? Uh, I spoke to him. 
who's been pushed to lead. Good night.